Hi, and welcome to Stephen Helwig Talks Tech. In my last video, I showed you how to create an end-to-end -end Synapse POC environment in just 15 minutes using an ARM template we have posted on GitHub. Today, I wanted to show you how to bring in some sample data, some sample notebooks, and some sample SQL scripts so you can get going. A lot of times when you create these POC environments, the next question is, okay, well, I wanna play around with it, but do I have data that I can use that's interesting enough? Um, where can I find data? How do I bring it in? We make it really easy in Azure Synapse by preloading SQL scripts, uh, Python notebooks, as well as sample data to get you started. I found this out by reading a blog by James Sarah on some of the most overlooked features of Azure Synapse. I'll post a link to that blog in the description below. Okay, let's get started. So we're here in the Azure Synapse portal experience. If you went through the tutorial to create that POC environment, it would look very much like this when you get started. Uh, I'm in the data section here, and you can see that there's nothing in the table section. There's no external tables. And if I go under linked data uh, and look at my data lake storage account, it's it's an empty container. There's or there's no containers at all actually in, inside this storage account. So I wanna bring in some data to get working with soon. Certainly I could go out and find some public data on the internet to bring in, or I could start orchestrating and bringing in my own data. I could use a copy activity to bring my data in. But the great thing about Synapse is the, the they've built in sample data into the system. So in the data section, if you hit the plus button, there is a browse samples area. This will open up the, sa the sample center and you'll see there's about 19 or so data sets that you have access to. These are public data sets that we have available. Uh, in addition to the data sets, there's an area which has sample notebooks as well as an area that has sample SQL scripts. So the first thing I wanna do is bring in one of these data sets. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the COVID-19 or the COVID tracking project data set here. So I'll click that and then click uh, continue below. This is going to show you a preview of the data. So what does the data look like? What kind of columns are in the data? It's not everything, but it's a, it's a good overview of what's in the data, uh, as well as some information on this left side around what the data is, what data sets are included, um, what the volume of the data is, data quality, so on and so forth. Who to contact if you wanted more information about it. So I'm going to click add data set. <laughs> And that's gonna create an area here under linked, and it's gonna to link to that open data set, right? So you can see if we click on this and do a new SQL script, we can select the top 100 rows. It's gonna do a SQL on demand query. Well, you see it's connecting out to a blob storage account, a public blob storage uh, full container of COVID-19 data. So this isn't sitting in our data lake storage account. This is out there on the internet. Uh, and so this query is going to uh, select the top 100 rows outside of that data. So our query comes back in about four seconds. It used SQL on demand, so we're not using our SQL pool. Uh, and it queried and, and brought back some of that data. So you'll see here it has data by date. Uh, so this is the day for the data, the state, positive and negative cases, hospitalization, so on and so forth. Okay. So that's just some really quick sample data. You can now start writing queries over that data. Or you could try to import that data into your uh, external table. And it, we actually give you a kind of a starter for that. So if you click on this same button here, you can create an external table and load this data in. So I'm going to select my pool here and I'll just call this um, P, uh, POC dot COVID. And it, I can have it use a SQL script and it'll create a SQL script uh, that will import that data for me. Right? and then select the data. So you'll see here it's importing it from this public data set. Uh, these are the columns that are a part of this data. So it's looked at that parquet format and generated that for you. And then I can run this to create an external table. Okay, so we're gonna let that run. Uh, while that runs, we're gonna go back and look at other samples. So now that we've brought in a sample data set, we can also look at sample notebooks. This is a great area to look at uh, some of the common things you might run use in Synapse uh, in a Spark notebook or in a uh, Scala notebook. One of the things you might do is you want to bring in data from data lake storage, right, uh, into it. So this is a good notebook to start with. I'll click continue here. 
and it shows you uh, a preview of what that uh, that notebook looks like. It has a little note here about how you can access the data. So this is kind of the connection information for the data to be on Data Lake Store. Um, this notebook uses uh, it's going to load sample data on public holidays. Uh, and so you can open that notebook. That was another sample data set that we saw earlier as well. And you can we can go down here and we can run this cell. So I'm gonna control enter. And you'll see here it's starting up our spark pool. Okay. So while that goes, I'm actually gonna, uh, I don't think the spark pool is going right now. So we'll let that start up. And then the last thing we'll look at is uh, browsing our samples again as SQL scripts. Once again, these are just common SQL scripts that you would use uh, inside Azure Synapse. So they will, will get you started. Uh, we're querying Parquet files right now. So that's a good, another good one to start with. We have Parquet files that are sitting in this public data set that we're quite trying to query over. And you'll see this script uh, in the preview, it shows you that it's going to show you how to query over the uh, CDC data for COVID. And then here is another query around um, around the New York taxi cab service. So I'm going to hit open and we're leveraging SQL on demand again. And so we can go down here and we can run this query. And what this query is going to do is it'll take, I think about 20 seconds to run here, but it's actually going to um, group the the um, count of rides by year. And so for each passenger count, it's going to tell you how many rides occurred in that year for that passenger count. So for instance, how many rides occurred with just one passenger? How many occurred with no passengers or three passengers? Okay, so our query has successfully run. I did have an error here where uh, the initial schema that I was using on this um, it didn't work. So I just changed it and called it uh, the, the table COVID. You can see it's imported that data and it's run a query over that table. And so if we go back on our workspace and we refresh this table section here, uh, actually, sorry, it's an external table. You'll see that we now have this COVID table uh, inside our SQL pool. We can expand it and we can look at the columns. Okay. And if we go back to our SQL query that was querying against the par Parquet files, it was using SQL on demand. You'll see that has also returned itself. So we have these counts of how many trips occurred by passenger count. And then I think our notebook is done. So you'll see that job executed as well. So we can go through and continually continue to execute through each one of these cells um, and then even importing our data. You can see here, this is how you would write data to the data lake storage Gen2 account. So these are great notebooks, uh, scripts, sample data to really get you started learning how to use Azure Synapse. I hope you enjoyed that look at how you can quickly get started with Azure Synapse by bringing in sample data, sample notebooks, and sample scripts. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at, at I'm Too Old for this and on Instagram at Stephen Helwig Talks Tech. See you again soon. Bye.